Hey you guys, it's Peter. And I'm back! Of course I'm back, I'm not going anywhere! Boost! Peekaboo, I see you because I'm YouTube! Famous now, available in 1981. 81? Yes, 81. The album, Dad AF. <clears throat> testing, testing, one, two, three. By request. <clears throat> Just a small town girl living in a lonely world. She took the midnight train going anywhere. How many of you are singing along with me? Okay, I have to tell you what is so funny is that I was trying to get inspired for this song and I was like listening to this song. I pulled it up on YouTube and what was so hilarious, I love this comment, right? So I went underneath here and I was like reading the comments because I thought, who leaves comments on like music videos like this? People like me. So anyway, the, the number one comment is somebody said, this is honestly one of the most iconic songs ever written, of course. But the second comment is so great, it is. I remember a day in high school, a guy in the back row um, in the class started singing a verse. Then another student jumped in, and another, and another, only to have the entire class, and at this point I'm like, <laughs> is this Glee? Is this an episode of Glee? Only to have the entire class sing maybe the first 30 seconds of this song. The teacher wasn't angry either. After class, she said, it was like a scene pulled straight from a movie. Wouldn't life be amazing if it was like that every single day? I think it would be so amazing. So anyway, how are you guys doing today? Um, <laughs> yes, I'm talking about Gabby Hanna again today and Trisha Paytas because Gabby Hanna and Trisha Paytas are kind of like in the middle of this back and forth thing with each other again, which it appears, okay, that Gabby Hanna is pulling all of these dramatics because she supposedly now has come out and said, well, I, she has come out and said that she supposedly has a 12 part series. Nobody really knows what it's about. I don't know if anybody really cares. We're gonna talk about it in a second and you guys can let me know what you think in the comment section below. I am so confused by this. And let me just tell you what's interesting, okay? Is if I make a Jeffree Star video, there's like one receipt of one tweet, okay? That I have to talk about. If I make like a Shane Dawson video like I did the other day about when he came out on Instagram and he posts a thing, I just have to read that one thing and read it, okay? If I do, you know, any of these people out there. But with Gabby Hanna, there's like, 15 different videos on an Instagram story, and then it's tweets to this person, TikToks, more tweets, more this, she's made a video, she's live, it's too much, you guys. It's too much to keep up with. And I'm like, I just cannot even imagine for one second living in Gabby Hanna's world, okay? But she did come out, and I'm gonna talk about all this in a second, but she did come out and she said something that I actually, I was like, okay, Peter, Put yourself in Gabby Hanna's shoes for a second. And there was a piece of what she said that I agreed, in, agreed with. So we're going to talk about that in just a second. But before I get into that, I want to say a few things. I got some comments here that I need to read. Oh, wait. Where is the first one? The first one is from Karen. Karen said, good morning, Peter. My birthday is on April 27th. I am turning 50. I watch you every day with my morning coffee and try to say your intro with you. I love your channel and it would really make my day to get a birthday shout out. So Karen, happy early birthday to you. Happy 50. Oh, my God. Oh, there's my book that I'm uh, reading right now, Central Park. That's the book for Peter's Book Club. I just finished the True Crime Book Club uh, for this month. Oh, I have to tell you, I got this email. And so I get all these emails from companies all the time, right? That they want to help me with my editing. I, they're always like, oh, we watched your YouTube channel. And we think you're doing fantastic at editing. <laughs> I'm like, y'all are straight up liars, straight from the pit of hell, okay? I don't do any editing. I cut off the beginning and the end of, y'all know that, okay? I might be able to slip in a video clip or a picture here and there, but they always like send me these like emails, right? And they're like, oh, your editing is already fantastic, but we can take you to the next level. But you know, like in marketing today, they don't want to come across as like they're, you know, marketing, okay, that it's a business. So they try to act like they're friendly with you. So this company has now sent me like eight messages, maybe 18, I don't know. So I got this one today. Hi, Peter, just checking in one last time, then I'll leave you alone. Walk slowly. This is a business, you guys, okay? Walk slowly and sadly into the distance wondering about what could have been. So we can figure out what we got wrong or what I got wrong. I don't even know this person, okay? It's just like a template response. It would be so helpful if you could let me know what stopped you from wanting to use our service. You just, uh, you can just reply with a single letter. A, just not interested, go away. <laughs> B, I will get it eventually. 
C, I've been abducted by aliens, please send help. And D, I need more info. If this is your company out there and you think that this is gonna help you in any kind of way, you need to maybe see, E, okay? Stop sending me emails! Anyway, so that was that. Um, and then I, w I had a couple other birthday things on here. Hold on a second. Okay, uh, V, uh, Miller said, Peter, please give me a birthday shout out. It's tomorrow the 25th. My oh, Victoria, my name is Victoria. I'm turning 19, I love you so much. So uh, Victoria, happy birthday. I hope you have the best birthday in the entire world. By the way, we were up in the Cheesecake Factory last week. Don't nobody ever come up to me, okay? Out in the public and say, at the Publix or in public and say, oh my God, are you Peter? No, that never happens to me, okay? No, nobody. People think I'm a meter maid or something like that. Okay, going around putting tickets on cars. But anyway, we were up in the Cheesecake Factory with our good genius, Melissa and Jason. And we were sitting there, we were all talking and whatever. And uh, the waitress came up to take our order. And, and so Melissa and Jason and uh, Alex were looking at me and I was like, oh, should I go first? And I hadn't spoken up until that point. And she goes, oh, Peter? And I looked at her and because she had a mask on, I was like, oh, well, maybe we know each other. Maybe I know her from a meeting or something. And I said, oh, I said, do I know you? And she goes, I watch all of your videos. She was so sweet. So her name was Victoria. She works at the Cheesecake Factory. I want to give a huge shout out to Victoria. She was a fantastic waitress, server, and she just was so amazing. So thank you, Victoria, for the amazing service and for making yours truly feel really special. It made me feel really good. So anyway, if you ever see me out in public, just come up and say hi. Okay. Let's see what uh, some of these other things are. Okay, oh, that's the same birthday shout out. I got a lot of these, a picture of me eating a Toblerone, which I thought was Tobl Toblerone, and I guess it's Toblerone. I finally got it right. Okay, so let's go in here. Um, hold on a second, let me find all of the receipts for the day, hold on. <laughs> oh wait, here it is. Carolyn said, my birthday is tomorrow. I love a shout out on any channel. I watch them all. Thanks for so often keeping me company during a lonely quarantine year. I'm rooting for your continued happiness and success. I'm root, we were rooting for you. <laughs> Did you guys watch? I, I can't say because I don't want to ruin it for anybody, okay? But I was very happy, very, very happy with uh, the results from RuPaul's Drag Race last night. Anyway, okay, so Caroline, happy birthday. I hope you have the most amazing birthday ever. And um, then Lynn uh, sent me this text and she said, so I went to the Ulta in the Fashion Mall Commons. Oh my God, that's my Ulta yesterday. And they moved Jaclyn Hills Cosmetics all the way to the back of the store on the, this tiny little display by KBD Beauty. Okay, so I happened to go into the Ulta today. Why? Because I uh, bought a bunch of nail polish, okay? So if you want to see about all of that, go over to my Peter Does Stuff channel and I talk all about, I show the nail polish. I also might have got some lippies in there as well. So you can go over there and see what I got. But while I was there, I was at the counter. I literally, I looked over the whole store, well, except for obviously one area by the KVD Beauty that people apparently stay away from. And I couldn't find Jaclyn Hill's kiosk at all, okay? And I originally talked, now she has new products coming out, so I'll be talking about that in a day or two. Um, she just announced that she has new products coming out, so congratulations, Jaclyn. But congratulations to this as well, because when I was checking out, I said to the woman that was helping me, she was so nice, and I said, hey, I said, where's Jaclyn Hill's like uh, kiosk thing? And she said, oh, we moved it back there to the KVD Beauty. It was just in the front um, when it first came out to bring attention to it. And I said, oh, okay. And I said, did you guys move it back there because it's not doing well? And she said, no, actually, she said, it's doing really, really well. She said, um, we just can't, we can't keep any in stock. She said, as soon as it's gone, we, ha we order more. So apparently, you heard it from an Ulta employee. She had no clue who I was. Um, Jaclyn Hill, uh, cosmetics in Ulta is doing very, very well. And she said to me, she goes, I really want to try the, the highlighter, she said, but I already have so many other highlighters at home. She's like, but I'm going to get them sooner or later. So apparently Jaclyn Hill at Ulta is doing really, really well. So anyway, can't judge a book by a cover sometimes, but thank you, Lynn, for your information because I almost, and here I'm going to use a little bit of this uh, Jaclyn Hill lip gloss. It's not my favorite, but I think it's pretty anyway. The container's pretty. <laughs> and I love that it's gold. Anyway, the applicator is kind of... <laughs> It's a lot. But anyway, so congratulations to Jacqueline on that. Okay, now is that all my receipts? Okay, let's get into this. So now let me tell you what happened, okay? And I'm gonna tell you just from my point of view, I don't have this all. I, I Listen, I could not sit down today and care enough to put this into order. I care enough to watch it. I care enough to have an opinion about it. But I don't care enough to put all these receipts into order and be like, oh, this is what this is. I tried to screenshot it in order to give you guys the best kind of cohesive whatever's going on with all this. But at this point, it's just like a lot to me. And Gabby Hanna saying one thing and then retracting it, saying another thing and then retracting it and on and on and on. So it's really, really hard, okay? I'm gonna say that first of all. Second of all, 
I know that Trisha Paytas has come out and stated that they uh, prefer they, them um, pronouns. So I am going to try to be respectful of that. But y'all know I talk real fast, okay? I talk really, really fast. So if I slip up, it is not on purpose whatsoever. I do not want to misgender Trisha. Um, and I am going to do my best. So I just want to say that before we get into this video, before somebody comes back and says, you misgendered Trisha, they prefer they, them pronouns. So I'm going to do my best. But we're going to be talking about all of this like this. Okay? So this was the first thing that I saw last night. I can't remember. Well, I'll try to tell you where I saw it. Um, so... Uh, Somebody posted this tweet. Okay, this pissed me off. Gabby Hanna, you're all about empowering women, but damn you take any chance to SHI toot on someone, don't you? And the reason why was um, somebody commented on her TikTok, on Gabby's TikTok, and said, someone said she's trying to be the next Trisha Paytas, and now I can't stop seeing that. Gabby responded to this TikTok and said, I'm like Trisha Paytas if she was talented and happy. Okay? So this started this whirlwind thing. Now, if you remember... Trisha was just on Gabby's podcast, okay? And they had this very kind of like nice moment. And to me, I, I just could not help watching this thing and thinking that Trisha's like, get me the hell off this show, okay? It was like there were all these jump cuts and edits where Gabby obviously didn't want to have conversations on camera about things that I don't even know what they talked about. I don't care to speculate. But, you know, they had this really great conversation about everything in the background. And then that whole hour that they talked before was never included in the podcast. And the podcast was watered down. And it was very much, it seemed to me, like Gabby trying to be in control of the situation. And by the end of it, Trisha's just like, um, I'm ready to go and have a slice of pizza. Okay, I cannot be bothered with this anymore. That's how I felt about it. And I actually felt, and this is just my objective opinion, that Trisha was more than kind to Gabby Hanna in this whole situation. So now, okay, after all of that was solved, which we've pr seen has been proven that that was pointless. Okay, there was no reason to do that whatsoever. They're back at each other again. Now, I don't know why Gabby would turn around and make this comment, but apparently she feels like Trisha always makes comments on her stuff, which I think that Trisha does sometimes, Okay. So I go in here now. Let me just tell you, I'm going to read these tweets as best as I can. So these are from Trisha, okay? So that comment about the, okay, this pisses me off. Gabby Hanna, you're all about empowering women, but damn, you take any chance to SHI toot on someone, don't you? Um, and says, at, at Trisha Paytas, just because they have BPD doesn't mean that they can't be happy, especially now that they've got stability in their life. Okay, and then Trisha tweets this and said, she's a lovely human, isn't she? I made a video trying to give her some redeeming qualities to see her keep posting and remaining creative, and she did this, LOL. So Trisha's, call, Trisha's calling her out. And then she said, Gabby is a very delusional person. I truly am like this secret fan of her content, but she tried to convince me for hours that we had exchanges that never happened. To me, I don't want to go back and forth with someone who needs help but won't get it. Um, and I just want to say this before we get into this, that Gabby Hanna in this uh, Instagram story that I'm going to show you in a second comes out and she says that she's doing this 12-part series, okay? She then later comes out in on Twitter and she apparently has deleted this tweet. I didn't see it. I just saw it on Duff Noodle's uh, Twitter that um, there are screenshots apparently of these uh, this voice memo note that went around. Okay, Gabby just came out and called Oscar Wilde out for showing their DMs in, in, on Twitter if Gabby Hanna comes out in this series and she shows any DMs and she shows any voice notes, that is the epitome of hypocrisy to me. That you're going to call somebody out for defending themselves with screenshots to just then turn around and do it in a 12-part series because you're taking on the world and you have to prove something. I, to me... I hope that this series is phenomenal. I hope she's successful. I hope I'm watching it and I'm like, man, I'm blown away by this series, okay? I also hope that Gabby Hanna in this series chooses to include some very important moments if she's going to talk about social media and her effect on it. I hope that she chooses to, and I haven't talked about this in quite some time, but I hope that Gabby Hanna addresses the fact that she told me that when she talked to Shane Dawson after the fact that after when he had first met Jeffree Star, that Jeffree Star still uses uh, the language, the racist language that he has been accused of. Gabby Hanna told me that, okay? And she was angry at Shane Dawson because Shane Dawson had done a video trying to find his videographer, a Andrew, a date when, Ga when Shane knew that Andrew and Gabby used to have dated and she was very hurt by the fact that Shane had done that, which is why she was telling me, okay? So there's your purpose to all of it. So if, tr if, if Gabby wants to come out, and she wants to do this 12-part series, I hope she includes that in there. Because if not, 
then while all this stuff has been going on for the last year and all of the the making Jeffree Star the greatest person in the world and Shane Dawson the greatest part in the, person in the entire world and she wants to call out every person in the world on YouTube that she doesn't think is like great or whatever but you didn't call that out where's your principles Gabby okay or are they only when they apply to you only when they apply to you. Because that'll be interesting to me to see if she in includes that in there as well. And I've called that out enough in videos and people have tagged her enough in it that she knows that I've said something about it. So it's not like it's this kitchen secret that nobody knows about. Okay, so then Trisha said, seeing yet another uh, breakdown for her is upsetting to me. I went on her podcast trying to do a restart for both her and me and it just sadly didn't happen. She's just, she's not just defending herself. She's being obsessive and defensive over the wrong stuff, okay? Then Trisha said, I did a whole video this week on how I want to see Gabby have redemption, have a redemption arc. I want to see her thrive. She has such a unique take on her art. It's different. And more people would be open to it if she wasn't so destructive. And then she said, there's no shame in seeking help. I go three times a week to group and individual therapy. I have a lot of mental health struggles coming at me daily. The key is to seek help and not take it out on others, which I absolutely 100% agree. But I'm not, Gabby Hanna is saying that she's completely fine and that she's not going through anything. So I don't know what she needs. I'm taking it on Gabby's, on face value that Gabby has come out and said, hey, I'm not, she just said in an Instagram story that I'm going to show you guys part of it. She's looking for crackers in the closet and she's like, all of these people keep on DMing me and asking me if I'm okay. She's like, I'm totally fine. I'm not going through anything, right? So she, apparently she's not going through anything. That said, Trisha says, Gabby has been a victim of some serious abuse online from David Dobrik and a few other serious issues that people feel for, feel for her on. Wish she would use her voice to stand up for that, which is actually bullying and harassment and not just at people who don't like her poetry. She said, I feel, uh, or they said, I feel for Gabby. I, uh, I like Gabby's perspective on a lot of things. I admire her investing in herself and her music. She just really needs someone stepping in. And then it goes on to say a bunch of other stuff. And then um, Trisha said, uh, okay, wait, somebody uh, responded to this and said, honestly, Trisha, sh Trisha, she's just trying to get attention by bringing her name up. You and Ethan just defended her from the vlog squad. She's just being desperate. Hope she finds inner peace soon. Trisha responded and said, and retweeted and responded and said, I'll always defend her against that. The comments they made about her appearance is repulsive and all that while being her friend would F anyone's head up. And people now are like tweeting to her. She really had no reason to bring you down in order to bring herself up. Trisha retweeted it and said, I don't take it personal. I've been there. I sadly know what she's going through. And I say that out of empathy and nothing else. And then it goes on and on and on. Um, and, uh, okay. And then Trisha has this interchange with Oscar Wilde, who's thanking her for, uh, thanking th them for supporting him. And then, um, Trisha said, I blocked her everywhere because I have no interest in the back and forth with someone delusional not seeking help. She voice memoed me the next day, I have it, of her admitting the story she tried to convince me that happened. In fact, did not happen. And um, then... It, goes, it just goes on and on and on, you guys. And then someone says, you're being so transparent with your struggles and trying to grow. It's really nice to see. Hopefully, she will get to that point. Trisha responds and says, transparency will set you free. I swear by it. So that's what's the whole... Uh, uh, there's a picture of me <laughs> with the box of Toblerone in my mouth. Um, so that's the whole situation from Trisha's point of view, okay? So then it goes into this Gabby Hanna... Oh, you guys, it's so much. This Instagram story that I literally, I sat in my car and I recorded the whole thing last night. And total, I don't even know how long it is. Total, let me see if, if it'll come up. And I can tell you guys. Um, hold on a second. I think it's like 10 minutes total. Oh, no, no, eight minutes. I'm not going to show the whole thing. I'm just going to show some clips of it in here. It's like eight minutes and 48 seconds. Where she went on this whole rampage. But... She does address this poetry part, so I want to uh, show it to you here. Here you go. What I did the last couple days was I responded to everybody who inserted themselves into my life. I responded to everybody who started to try to make drama with me despite them not being involved in any type of situation. Because what I did was call out the fact that a woman published a book mocking me and called it constructive criticism. And because I didn't think it was cool that she had a dog write her book in place of an abused child who was supposed to have written my book um i thought it was really fucking callous and cold so i wanted to call attention to it and then i responded to everybody i was seeing who was inserting themselves to point out how ridiculous it was that i can't defend myself in any situation me simply defending 
myself and responding to the people who were bullying me, which it is bullying. You can't call me both irrelevant and say that um, I'm too big to bully somebody. You have to pick one of those. I, it's just exhausting, but I proved my point. Um, and I'm really excited for you guys to see these videos. So stay tuned, please. So burnt out from editing. It's been about a month and a half that I've been working on this. Maybe, maybe a month and three weeks. And I've done... Um, so far 11 one to two hour uh, long videos and i have one more to edit one more to film and edit oh my god it's a lot <laughs> it's so much like dude the editing on this i have some people i need to shout out later who have helped me so much in terms of like collecting and organizing everything so that i didn't have to keep going back and doing it um, there's no way I would have finished this otherwise. I never would have been able to get through it. I never would have been able to, uh, I just, I wouldn't have, it would have been too overwhelming. <laughs> so this has been crazy how many people have collected stuff that I haven't even seen. This story is even crazier than I fucking thought. To be telling stories again, it feels good. That's where I started. That's where, that's where I fell in love with creating. And I feel like I just have that love back. Dude, it feels so good to just fucking be back. I feel like I found myself fully again. All of me. I'm a fucking storyteller. I love that. This gave me some of the best advice I've gotten in a long time on my podcast. She said that whenever she's in something on the internet, she just says what she wants to say and then she shuts it off and it doesn't bother her. And that's fucking awesome. So I'm doing that. <laughs> Okay, so here, that was just one small part of the eight minute and 48 minute clip and all this kind of stuff. But re referencing what she was talking about with why she was doing this, okay? And she said, but I proved my point. Actually, I don't think that you did, okay? I think that she's gonna try to prove her point through this series, which I have, I have a feeling it's probably got to do something to do with online bullying or social media bullying or critiquing and things like that, okay? And I hope that it's educational. I hope that we learn a lot from it, from, you know, Gabby's point of view. But again, and I said this in my video the other day, and I'm trying to be really, really fair to Gabby, it seems that she always feels like somebody is out to get her, okay? And, it, you know, and she said, I'm calling out anybody that inserts themselves into the situation. There were quite a few fans of Gabby Hanna's, people that had watched her for a long time. If you go and you read the threads under Gabby's tweets, there are a lot of fans that are like, Gabby, I can't support you anymore. Like, I've supported your artwork, I've supported your music, I bought your music, I love your videos, I love your podcasts, I love your story times, but I, I, this is, like, too much. You keep on doing this and now the problem is this is that for somebody like me that doesn't really know that much about Gabby Hanna other than like what I've seen in the last couple years like and maybe a few vines from back in the day a little bit like I'm sure Gabby is extremely talented okay but this is what I know of her this is what I know of Gabby to cause kind of these problematic dramatic like explosions on social media every couple months this is what I know of Gabby okay I don't know her for these extremely interesting story times. I don't know her for sitting down and like just her music thriving and all that kind of stuff, which is sad because what's happening now, okay? And I don't think she really understands this because she's so intent on being a right fighter and proving a point. And, and, and listen, there are a lot of people out there that are bullied a lot worse than Gabby Hanna. And that's why I said in my video the other day, when we use these words that she's throwing out, okay? Like narcissistic, she's throwing that word out a lot, you know? When you throw those words out, you diminish their meaning. And I couldn't remember what the word was I was looking for the other day. And somebody said diminish. You diminish their meaning, okay? When you sit there and you talk about bullying and online bullying because somebody's critiquing you, you know, like, or somebody's saying, hey, I can't support you anymore or whatever. And I read Nick, Ste Nick Snyder from the Viewer's Voice tweet the other day that she was referring to as part of the hate train. It was not part of the hate train. It was basically just saying, hey, Gabby, this is a pattern. This is a theme that you do, right? But all of that she can't hear because it's all bullying to her. Now, I will tell you in watching this, when she said that the whole thing started because she wanted to call somebody out who had published a book from a dog's point of view, okay, parodying and mocking her book, which she talked about childhood trauma in, right? I can understand that. Like, I can get behind that 100%. Like, I can understand Gabby being really mad about that, right? Like, how dare this person... 
I mean, whether you think that her poetry is the greatest thing in the entire world, or you think it's horrible, or you think that it need, it's talentless, or whatever you think, okay? Look, take it from Gabby Hanna's point of view, you know? It's like, you know, the movie To Kill a Mockingbird, or the book, well, the book To Kill a Mockingbird, but I like the book, the movie better than the book. When Atticus, you know, says to Scout, you don't really truly know a person until you stand on their front porch in their shoes and walk around for a bit, you know? And it's very much that. And so I try to do that with Gabby, right? If I were Gabby and I had poured my heart and soul into this poetry book, right? That I had filled out my emotions and my thoughts and all that kind of stuff into it and all of my memories from my past. And I was really cathartically working through some of my issues in this poetry and I put it out there into the world. Okay, it's one thing to have somebody critique it and say, I, like I said, I think that the, the poetry is, you know, it comes across as sophomore-ish, it comes across as a bit amateurish, she doesn't have very many technical skills, but I think that her emotions and her feelings and memories are really in there. And I'm going to buy the books and tell you guys what I really think, because I am now so interested that I want to read them and see what I really think, right? That's one thing, okay? To go through and read poems and to critique them from a cr critical point of view as a piece of literature, I think it's completely fair. It happens all over YouTube. It's a community called BookTube of which I am part of, okay? It happens all the time. And it's really actually cringy. This just happened yesterday when an author gets on Goodreads, which I talked about the website Goodreads, which we rate books and all that stuff, and starts coming at people for their, uh, for their reviews. It's very cringy. It's like you can't handle a critique whatsoever. Like, it, it's just, it's, it's uncomfortable to see that happen, right? Because it's like stand by your artwork that you put out there, what you put out there. That's one thing. To publish and write a book from the point of view of a dog, parodying and mocking Gabby, I can understand Gabby being upset with that. I would be hurt about that too. This, the difference is how I would handle that. I, you know, if I were in that situation, I don't know. Maybe I would react in a different way. But she's had months to respond to this, okay? If I had had months to respond to that and I had really thought it through and I talked to my sponsor about it and my friends and I asked people what they thought, I think if I ever made a comment about it, okay, I would probably say, you know, it really hurt my feelings. Like, I put a lot of time and effort into writing that book. I put my emotions, I put my, you know, it was an emotional roller coaster for me. It was a cathartic process for me to work through things that I had gone through when I was younger. I was hoping it might be helpful to other people to have somebody make so much fun of it that they turned it into a mockery of being written by a dog, right? Like, that hurt my feelings. Like, you know, I don't understand, like, I can cr listen to the critiques of the poetry that maybe you don't like it or it wasn't great or whatever, but where it came from, like, that, you're attacking, like, the motive and the purpose of it. And I can understand Gabby being upset about that. But to go on a four-day, you know, social media, constant, explosive tweets and Instagram stories and whatever, it, it really, it's not helping. It's not helping her. It's not helping the situation. Because now people are like, well, first of all, she brought a lot of attention to this book that was written by a dog, okay? Second of all, it's like, well let's go look at her poetry, which maybe that's what she wants. Maybe she wants to sell a bunch of these books and that's what she's doing, you know? It was interesting to me, and I talked about this the other day, that when you look at other YouTubers that have published books, like Shane Dawson, okay, who had a bestseller for a long time, okay, or like Joey Graceffa, or like Zoe, and, you know, there's a lot of people out there that have had bestsellers. They don't have quite as many reviews or ratings as she does on her first book, and I'm wondering now in retrospect if it's because of all of this dramatics that she does have that many reviews because she's brought, driven so many people over there. So maybe, you know, and the reality is that Gabby Abby, okay, unlike the person that sent me the email, is not as great an artist as she thinks she is. Maybe she's a better marketer. I'm just saying, okay? Maybe she's somebody that really knows how to market what she considers fantastic art, you know? Um, you know, anybody can sing a song and call themselves a singer. Hell, I do it at the beginning of my videos every single day, okay? I don't call myself a rock star. I don't call myself that. But if I wanted to, then I'm a rock star. If Gabby wants to play music and put music out there and call herself a rock star, Girl, have at it, okay? Do you. Be a rock star, okay? But then own it. Own being a rock star. Come, quit this, this, all this shenanigans and hocus pocus have coming from people. And yes, I did steal that from Alyssa Edwards because I love her, okay? Boost! But like, all of that, putting that out there in the world, like, what for? Because you're trying to prove a point, she said, okay? And there was a lot of people talking about the hypocrisy of this Instagram story that she said one thing and then she said something else and then she said one thing and then she said something else. And that's true. There is a lot of back and forth with her, you know? I don't understand. I just really don't. I will say it's piqued my interest in watching this series, kind of. Because if I had found out that Gabby Hanna was putting out a 12-part series and none of this had occurred, I would be interested not at all to watch it. Like, if somebody said, are you going to watch Gabby Hanna's 12-part series? I'd be like, no. But now that she's caused all of this drama, and I'm just talking from my point of view, okay? 
Now that she's caused all of this and she's hinted that this is going to be part of the series, yeah, I do want to watch it. I kind of, I mean, I am more interested than I thought I would be. You know, do I want to sit out and she's talking about hour and a half episodes? Do I want to dedicate 12 and a half, you know, 12 hours to Gabby Hanna? Hell no. I don't care that much. Okay. And it's not because I, anything wrong with Gabby Hanna. I'm just, she's not my cup of tea. Okay. I don't, there's nothing about her that to me is that interesting or that exciting that I want to dedicate 12 and a half hours to period. And I'm sure there's a lot of people that are like, we feel the same way about you. I get it. That's fine. Okay. I was just talking to my Peter does Stuff channel yesterday about how I'm like really, really into watching these videos where they make these water parks or water slides underneath the ground in the middle of the jungle. Have you guys seen these? I'm obsessed. That's what I watch. Watch what makes you happy, okay? So then I asked myself, Peter, if you're somebody that wouldn't normally watch a 12-part series from Gabby Hanna, but now your interest is peaked because she just did all these dramatics, was that the purpose of all of this? I don't know. I guess we'll find out. Anyway, let me know what you think about all of that in the comment section below. I love you guys, and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.